Hello, fellow stargazers. This is Dr. Vicki from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. We're going to look at the astrology for the sign of Leo for the year of 2024. Um, but before we get to uh, that, uh, I did pull a oracle card. Um, the deck was sitting there and spoke to me and said, pick me, pick me. So I picked a card from uh, the Soul Flower Plant Spirit Oracle by Lisa Estabrook. And uh, this will be for an energy for the whole year for Leo. And uh, I did select a card and I got Iris, which is inspiration. So this is the energy for the whole year for you uh, sort of thing to pay attention to, Leo. It says, Iris encourages you to cultivate the beauty within so you can better create and express in the world around you. Her deeply restorative energy helps to revitalize your connection to divine guidance, helping you to discover your true passion and allowing inspiration and create creativity to flow. And that's really that's really uh, good news. And also, um, 2024 is an eight vibration. And in the tarot, the eight is uh, the strength card, which is the card associated with Leo. So it's going to be a very self-expressive year anyway. <laughs> and so the iris will help to um, inspire your creativity. Okay, let's take go right to the astrology here. And... Uh, just give me a moment. And uh, okay, here we go. All right, so we're looking at the sign of Leo. Leo is fixed fire. The mantra for Leo is I will. Uh, and the ruling planet, of course, is the sun. So if we look at uh, the, the general trends for the year, um, the sun, of course, moves through the sun, your ruling planet, moves through uh, a sign a month. Every 30 days, it, it goes through a sign. And so that's usually pretty similar. Uh, in general, we start the year, we start the month off. We have Mars in your house of fun, um, but it's only there for a very short amount of time because it it. It starts the year at 28 degrees of Sagittarius. Then it goes into Capricorn, which is your house. house. Oh, did I say Mars? I'm sorry. I meant the sun. I want to talk about the sun. Yes. So the sun, the sun starts in your sixth house. Um, then it moves into the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. And so the sun will progress through the chart. And uh, I'll just give you a general sense of the sort of themes that will come up for you in the in those months <clears throat> because you are ruled by the sun. So <clears throat> we start with the sun, of course, in in Capricorn. That is your sixth house. So the first sort of the first part of, or the first part of uh, of January. Um, Perhaps you're thinking um, about all those things that you're going to do different this year for your health and your well-being. That's always a big thing, right, Leo? Um, <clears throat> uh, by um, by the time the, the sun moves into Aquarius, which happens on the 20th of January, um, and the, the, the focus becomes on your relationships, that continues um, when the sun is in Pisces, because Pisces rules your eighth house, which is also a house of relationship, but it has more to do with feelings and emotions and sharing money. So that becomes a focus. Uh, also, it's about debt and maybe debt relief, perhaps, or maybe evaluating the debt that you're in. Um, the sun moves into uh, Aries. It moves into your ninth house of uh, faraway places. Maybe this is a time to take a trip. Uh, there is, just as a, a, an aside, and we'll talk about it a little later, Mercury is retrograde in Aries in all the fire signs this year. So fire is spirit and creativity, right? And Mercury requires, when Mercury goes retrograde, it requires us to reconsider, right? Rethink, go over. And so you will be going over your ideas. You will be going over your creative projects. You will be going over your 
your personal truth and your and how you see yourself in the grand scheme of things very very Sagittarius so that is going to happen uh, through introspection this year for you and that has to do with Mercury so I say when the sun goes into Mercury sign um, I mean when the sun goes into Aries this might be a time that you take a long trip right or this can also be a time when you um, do some sort of higher education maybe some metaphysical studies at this time um, the moon the sun moves into Taurus um, the, at the end of April and the sun is in your uh, 10th house. And this is really your time to shine. When the sun's in, in Taurus, you really do. You're, you're the star of the show because your sun is up in the 10th house. Now, remember, we have Uranus and, um, and Jupiter in that house. And so Jupiter makes it even more so. So this is actually a pretty good time for you, for you to be famous, perhaps. Um, but uh, Uranus is also there. So the sun coming up to Uranus in that your 10th house can bring unexpected um, changes in status, maybe social status or maybe, um, um, and, so, and social status can be you were you were married, then you get a divorce or you were divorced or you weren't married and then you get married or, you know, you, you go from doing this to doing that, but it's all sort of seen in, in uh, in the world, people can can actually see that happening for you. Uh, the sun moves into Gemini, moves into that house of friendship. This is a really good time to connect with friends, to communicate, for networking. Very good time. The sun, um, as it gets closer and closer to uh, when your birthday is, when the sun goes into Cancer, the sun goes through the twelfth house, and this can be a really difficult uh, energy for. Leo, because it's really about sort of cloistering yourself and and in a way, uh, it's sort of going inside in order for when the sun moves back into your sign of Leo, that you're sort of reborn. So there's always this sort of the king is dead, long live the king kind of <laughs> energy with Leo as the sun. And, and of course, if the sun is your ruler, that kind of makes sense, right? All right. So I talked a little bit about Mercury retrograde. As I said, Mercury's retrograde, mostly in fire. It does have a little bit of retrograde in uh, in Virgo before it goes back into Leo. But I'll give you the dates on that. The first Mercury retrograde happens in Aries this year. Uh, it starts, of course, on April Fool's Day, April 1st, goes to the 25th of April, and it moves from 28 degrees of Aries to 17 degrees degrees of Aries. So that's the area of Aries that has Mercury go over it three times. So if you happen to have planets there, uh, even as a Leo or Leo rising or a Leo moon, you might have planets in Aries. We know that Mercury is going to go over those three times. The second Mercury retrograde is occurs on uh, the 5th of August and it goes until August 28th. Uh, that, that one starts in Virgo, four degrees of Virgo, retrogrades back into Leo, all the way back to 22 degrees of Leo. So if you have anything between 22 degrees of Leo and four degrees of Virgo, we know that Mercury is going over that area of your chart three times. And then the third time, we have um, retrograde completely in the sign of Sagittarius, which for you, uh, Sagittarius is your house of of children, it's your house of creativity, it's your Leo house, it's your uh, house of creative self-expression. You might have to edit what you have said or what you plan to say, okay, at this time. And uh, this is from 1126, which is right around Thanksgiving, right, till December 14th. So between Thanksgiving and those first couple of weeks of December when everybody's doing the Christmas shopping or their holiday shopping, we have um, Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius. Hopefully that prevents us from overdoing it because Sagittarius has a way of like being super positive. But when it's retrograde, perhaps we'll, we'll be a little bit more frugal and think, well, maybe I shouldn't get that, that spectacular gift for that, that person. Um, maybe it's not in my budget as it was. <laughs> All right, so, so that's going on. Now Mars, the planet of energy, pretty much goes directly through all the signs. It starts at the uh, latter degrees of uh, Sagittarius and then goes all the way to about six degrees of Leo uh, or is it six degrees of Leo. Hold on, let me see. I don't want to tell you incorrectly. 
where is it? Uh, seven. I was close. Seven degrees of Leo. And it stations retrograde on the 6th of December. So we do have a, a Mars retrograde, but the majority of that retrograde is happening. Um, well, I guess half and half is happening in the, uh, the end of the year and then the start of the of 2025. So that, that Mercury retrograde is a little bit of a bridge between um, this year and next year, 24 and 25. And it does retrograde back into cancer. And so for you, this is a little bit challenging because uh, Mars just gets in your sign, seven degrees, and then it starts to retrograde. And it's going to retrograde all the way back. Um, let's see, do I have this? What is it retrograde? Oh, I don't have it. Okay. Um, because it's next, it's the next year. I didn't write it down. Um, but uh, December, Mars goes retrograde through your first house and then in 2025, it moves into your 12th house. Um, so the beginning of 2025 is going to be a very uh, actively introspective month um, and perhaps quite emotional uh, with a lot of family karma stuff, I think, coming up for you because Mars will be retrograde in cancer, in your house of karma. And cancer is always has something to do with the family. So there's going to be some family issues for that. But that probably won't really kick in until 2025. So you have a whole year before we get there. So let's not even worry about that. All right, Jupiter. Jupiter is in Taurus as we start the year and stays in Taurus to the 25th of, of, um, of May. Now it, it, it went into um, Taurus in May of 2023. So it spent a whole year and we'll be spending a whole year in Taurus. And then the first sort of pretty much the whole five first five months it's in Taurus. Um, and for you, Taurus is your 10th house again. So this is this is expansion of uh, your understanding of people seeing you. This is a very uh, potent time for you. And then it moves into Gemini on the 25th. And then it's moving through your house of goals and 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 uh, networks and friends and friendships. So there's an expansion of all those things at that time. Uh, actually, Jupiter really does actually like being in this part of the chart. It likes being in the tenth house. It likes being in the eleventh house, and it really likes being in the twelfth house. Uh, these are the most collective. This is the most collective part of your chart here. And so when planets are moving through here. Um, there's a there's a feeling of sort of faded destiny towards you know being out there in the world so to speak okay saturn spends the whole year in pisces it starts at five degrees of pisces oh, four degrees of pisces moves all the way up to 20 degrees of pisces and then it goes retrograde it goes retrograde at the end of june june 29th um and then it actually goes as far retrograde as 12, 13 degrees. So it goes from 19 to 13 degrees and then comes back, comes direct. And let's see when it leaves, um, when it leaves at the end of um, December, it's at around 14. So Pisces, uh, Saturn and Pisces from about three to about 20 degrees uh, this year. And so if you happen to have planets in Pisces in those degrees, we know that Saturn is going to be affecting them in some way. And of course, Saturn, Saturn is the planet of um, karma. It's the planet of testing the limit, just testing. Saturn is a great tester. And it is your eighth house. Um, and your eighth house is your shared resources. It's your debt. It's the debt that you carry. It's your desires. It's, it's, it's death, really. Death. It's depth debt and death it's also transformation it's an emotional house and so it's i'll tell you saturn moving through the eighth house is not easy i remember the last time saturn moved through my eighth house and it was uh not easy you also have to watch out for um being audited during that time because saturn is is the sort of the uh uh what do you call that the one on the adding machine or the uh you know, checks off all the boxes. Did you do this right? It's the rule of law, really, Saturn. And so if you're if you're uh 
if that's been a little bit dicey, <laughs> this is not a good time for you. And in point of fact, um, Donald Trump is an, is a, is a, is a Leo rising and Saturn is sort of moving. Although let's see, is Saturn in that house yet? See, I don't think Saturn is in that house yet. Saturn is still in the seventh house, but then it's going to move into his eighth house. And, uh, and that's when I think, um, we're going to see even more stuff when that happens, but we have time for that. And um, we may not even care at that point. Um, but so that's, so that's, that's happening. That's happening. Um, Uranus is in Taurus, remains in Taurus all year in that 10th house, sudden changes of fortune, perhaps maybe the rug gets pulled down from under you, or maybe there's, there's a, a, a sudden download where you're like, where'd that idea come from? So we can have brilliant ideas with this, but but Uranus in its nature wants to free us, wants to free us. And so uh, if we're not willing to be freed from situations, it'll do it for us. If we're willing to be free, we might take the opportunity that Uranus allows us. And that could also include career, changing your career and stuff like that. Neptune in Pisces, staying in that eighth house as it has since 2000. And 11 it's there for 14 years and then pluto 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 the story of pluto uh last year we had a taste of pluto moving into aquarius and we get a taste again only this time um we're really we're just we're like diving into aquarius and then then gently coming up for for into capricorn for a couple of months and then boom we're in aquarius for the next 20 years um so, so for you, the Pluto moves from that, that sixth house of work and service and health um, and moves into your house of relationship. Again, it moves into Aquarius on the 20th of January, uh, moves back into Capricorn for a brief stay on the 3rd of um, September, turns retrograde while in, Cap while in the last degree of Capricorn and only spends... All the time that Pluto spends in Capricorn is within the last degree of Capricorn. And um, then it's, it turns around, it goes direct on the 12th of um, October. And then by the 20th of November, happy birthday, President Joe Biden. Um, it moves out of Capricorn and into Aquarius and there it stays. And so 20 years of, of Pluto moving through your house of relationship, guys. So things should be interesting. Remember, it's the house of marriage. It's also the house of open enemies. It's the house of business partnership. And, and Pluto is always about transformation. So things change. Things change for you. All right, let's see. Is that, is that anything else? Oh, the nodes of the moon. I didn't talk about those. So the nodes of the moon, the north node is in um Aries which is a fellow fire sign so there's a nice flow of energy from Leo to Aries uh the north node in your chart is is moving through your ninth house so this is a time to sort of move forward courageously into perhaps a new perspective on the world as it were or maybe this is time for you to teach your class uh get out there and show people what you know and share your understanding we do have uh, the south node in the third house, letting go. That's the letting go point. It's in Libra. So perhaps we need to let go of a few relationships or the way we relate to something. And the third house can be siblings. So if you have a relationship with your sibling, maybe it changes or maybe it needs to change. We do have the eclipses on the nodes, of course. That's always how it goes. And so we have two eclipse seasons. We have one in in uh, March, March, April, and then we have September, um, September, October. The ones in the spring are North Node eclipses. So it's about moving in a new direction, in the direction of Aries. Um, the South Node eclipses are about letting go. And so that's going to be more of a let go. Now let's take a look at these, um, uh, these eclipses. The first thing we get is we actually get a lunar eclipse, a, excuse me, a lunar eclipse first, full moon lunar eclipse at six degrees of Le Libra. So the moon is on the south node 
and the sun is on the north node. You determine whether it's a north node or a south node uh, eclipse by where the sun is, okay? Uh, but the, the full moon is on the node, uh, on the south node. So there is something being released. And then we have, uh, so something is, is, is leaving. And then we have the new moon solar eclipse on the, on, um, the 8th of uh, April. And that's occurring at 20 degrees of Aries. So if you happen to have anything at 20 degrees of Aries, you're having an eclipse. And this eclipse actually can be seen going over the United States. It's part of this giant cross that is created by two eclipses. The first one was 2017. So the first one came down from Oregon down to uh, South Carolina, I think it was, and this one from Maine to to uh, Texas. And so there's a big cross right around Southern Illinois, like Tennessee, Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, I think, that whole area there, which has been very active, uh, politically active of late. So it should be interesting to see what happens. Uh, this X marks the spot for that. Okay. Then we have the, the uh, fall eclipses. It starts again with a full moon. This time the full moon, a lunar eclipse is at 26 degrees of Pisces. So it's, it's actually in the next sign of, 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 of the nodes. Um, but the nodes themselves will stay within um, Aries Libra for the whole year. It does not go in. It's just that we have one of the eclipses uh, is with the with the moon in Pisces. And for you, that is that house of, of debt. It's the it's a house of relationship. It's a house of taxes. Uh, so again, this is just make sure that everything is copacetic when it comes to your taxes, because I think uh, and figure out like who you owe, what you owe, what you need to do. Uh, make sure everything is sort of lined up so that if an issue comes up, you can say, oh, no, this is this has been done or this is this is in the process or this is, you know, so just be prepared for that. Um, and then we have the new moon and the new moon is in Libra. It's on the 2nd of October. It's at 11 degrees of Libra. It's an interesting degree for Libra because the tarot card associated with Libra is the 11. So. Um, it's about cosmic justice, right? And so this new moon solar eclipse in Lib Libra on the south node, on the south node, um, is a, we need to re let go of something in order before we can start a new relationship. So that's sort of what that talks about. But that's what's going on for the year. Um, let me stop the share here. So if you want some more specific information about your chart, the best thing to do is to get uh, a reading. Um, I do do personal readings with astrology, numerology, and Kabbalah. It's a combination reading. Uh, most people who get them love them. Uh, and even if you've had readings in the past, this one's this one will will uh, it's it's very interesting. If you want to know what those might look like, you can check out any of my in the news segments because I do to some of that little magic in, in the news segments. Otherwise, if you uh, if you check out my channel at the beginning of the month, I do taroscopes and I talk about the specific energy, uh, astrological energy of every sign uh, and then followed by a tarot reading. So that's always fun. And if you wanna know what's going on in the, on the day, I uh, every morning I go out uh, mostly <laughs> into my garden and uh, and I, I talk about the the stars and what we can expect for that day. So lots of things on the channel. Um, I would appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe if you would. If you really want to support me in a more uh, uh, sort of nuts and bolt way, I don't know how to put that. There's another expression. I can't think of it right now. Uh, I should script these things because I always like just talk right off the top of my head. Um, but if you if you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon page. There is a link below for as little as five dollars a month. You can help support my work, and uh, you know I love doing this, and uh, I, I hopefully people are finding it helpful. And if you happen to be one of those people and you want to consider 
supporting me, that would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, as I said, a thumbs up, uh, sharing my video um, and your attention um, is important as well. So thanks very much. All right. Well, have yourself a wonderful year. I will see you every month if you want to see me every day, if you want to hear me uh, until, until the next time I see you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and uh, namaste.